Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. We are here for episode 126. We made it. We did. It's a hot one out today. It is a hot one, but it's every day because we're in June. <laughs> yep. So why are you even Well, it's not August obvious? yet. It felt like August See, these to me today. present sufferings will now be worth mentioning <laughs> okay. when, when we make we get it to, to October. August. When we get yeah. to August, August will be so much hotter. We'll I was go. just I just want to say, I think you have gotten the tone of that verse wrong. Because the present <laughs> sufferings won't be worth mentioning because what's coming is worse. Well, it's so much worse. I was talking about what I was talking about. <laughs> so you just, you just reminded me of, I had a conversation just last week. I met someone who has moved here to our area from Chicago. They've never lived here uh, before, and they were talking about how hot it was. I also had a conversation with somebody from a different part of the country. Okay, and I, and I, so I talked to this girl, and she was like, it, it's really hot. And I said, oh, and then we hadn't barely gotten into June at that point, and I'm like, oh, you've not been through August yet. Yeah. And she was like, it gets worse. Well, and I'm like, yeah. Sawyer, who is our current resident, is yes. from Missouri, and we had a conversation about, you know, it gets hot in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And he said, he goes, oh, I'm used to 98, 99, 100-degree weather. I said, the difference is you have never done, I said, Georgia summers are that level of heat while you're swimming through an ocean, with while, a, with a blanket on. while the pollen count is at 120. You're still dumping pollen in there. The <laughs> yeah. air, you can see it as it's going in your lungs. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this and is it's not going to be good. It's wet, it's wet. pollen <laughs> coming into your throat. Yeah. I said, you've never experienced a Georgia summer. So. a wet blanket. What we yeah. need to do with Sawyer is drive him below the Nat line one day this oh, summer. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> he would be in we the take, heat. We should take him down to Providence Canyon and make him walk. <laughs> there you in go. the humidity while he's going. I did that one year, actually. I oh. went in the summertime and walked Providence Canyon with my family uh. and about died. Yeah. So. Of course, uh, for those of you who know Sawyer, you'll know very well. He'd be very excited about that he by would. the time it was done. He's very positive. He's Every fine. single time, rock on, by the end of it, he'd be very excited. Okay. So. Uh, I didn't even do the intro. I, Just I so you all know, I am not walking any canyon with Sawyer oh, sure. or anyone else. <laughs> You're walking with nobody. Walking he climbs, he, he's a mountain climber. He does all that kind of stuff. He'd yeah, be so excited. I'm not doing any of that. All right. So let me do the intro because we said we'd do the intro every time. Okay. Well, go ahead and do it. My name's Jason. This is Ed. This is Nathan. <laughs> we're the teacher team at Community Christian Church. And start right now. And we're doing this podcast to help you think more like Jesus as we answer your questions. Today, as I teased uh, in our last episode, we're doing something we have never done before. I bet you're so excited to find out what that is. Them or us? Oh, I didn't know I, who you were talking you, to. Yes. You look very excited. I'm so excited. I, I, I anticipate no one's listening. They're scrubbing through. Oh, <laughs> don't do that. You'll miss the fun. Maybe this is all they listen to. <laughs> so last week, I'm, I alluded to this, that most of the time we get questions from just anonymous people. They don't, they choose, and it's fine. You choose not to give us your name, and we don't require that. We answer all questions. We are not partial to those. I just want to say, I don't think you're an anonymous person. You just have submitted it they anonymously. Might be. Oh, okay. They might be. They might be anonymous. Are we on an English lesson now? They, I'm just saying, they, I just don't want them to think. I, don't know. I think they know what I meant. Uh, they maybe think. they did. I all don't right. know. Well, Back to my original point. All you Today, anonymous people who don't know who you Today's episode, are. I am calling the Sydney episode. Oh, oh Sydney. Sydney. We should have had confetti. We should have had cupcakes. Sydney our, is an our, anonymous person. Our amazing listener, watcher, she always puts her name by her question. Used uh, to be in Colorado, great. now in North Carolina. That's yeah. right. So she's getting hotter, you know, as yeah, she comes. As she comes yeah. she gets, she's getting to the Colorado, hot weather yeah. down here. Yeah, so, that's right. But Sydney has left us a lot. She just, like, bombarded us with she questions. She didn't want us great. to not have questions. That's right. And very so kind she, of her. She was so nice to let me know, this is me, and here's all my questions. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to answer all Sydney's questions in one episode. We're going to okay. do it. Here we're we gonna, go. We're going to get right to every single one of Lightning your questions. Round. Yes, we do want cupcakes. Yes, we do. All day long. Is that a question? No, but it's the answer. <laughs> That's the right answer. Here's Sydney's question number one. And by the way, if you want an episode dedicated to you, you've got to start putting your name on the question. <laughs> Sydney wants to know, I heard y'all were running out of questions. So. The answer to that was yes. It was yes. It's not anymore. You, <laughs> yeah. you spurred on people's yeah, imaginations. Right. So here we go. Has God already chosen everyone who will be saved? And if so, what's the point or necessity of sharing the gospel? 
Now, first, before we even touch on that question, I need to tell you, uh, Cindy, we actually have answered that to a degree. Uh, sure. So you need to go and check out podcast number 114. Oh, wow. Where we answer the question, how, what does God know? Did you know write about? that down or did you just I know wrote that? it down. Oh, okay. What does God know about has the future? It has them all in his head. No, I don't. <laughs> That's episode 114. And also, in the episode 105, uh, we talked about why should we pray if God knows everything. So we touch on all that, but we're going to answer your question. So, by the way, if you don't know how to find those episodes, there's a playlist on YouTube that you can go to called Full Podcasts on our YouTube channel, and you can just find every episode we've ever done. I think also if you go into our channel, Mm -hmm. there is a little search thing on the side. You can just type in 105, and it'll pop it right up for you. hope so. So, but... Quickly, can we answer this question for Sydney? So she does, if she doesn't want to watch, and the of, question was, does God know the particular number of people? Has God already chosen everyone who's going to be saved? Now, if John Piper were here, he would say one thing. Why, yeah. <laughs> why are we having a conversation on this of What would be well, different if John Piper was here? Because he's going to be here next week. Oh, no, he do we assume that. John Piper is watching? It? If so, you are much smarter than any of us sitting here. But I don't. I don't what, what is happening now? And ha- and Three quarters of the audience is going, who? Yes, exactly. Yes, more All than right. that, probably. We, but but uh, short answer to the way we would answer that question is no. No, God no. does not. Yeah. No. Yeah. The over- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> no, no, no. The overwhelming theme of the story of God and the story of people in the Bible points to us having free will. That's yes. what we believe yes. it points to. Now, there are many people in lots of different corners of the Internet that will disagree with that. Uh, all three of us would not. Yeah. So, yes. um, yeah. I, I will say, if you're interested in that uh, question, uh, predestination, which is, is what's most popularly known as Calvinism, um, there's, um, there's a lot out there on that, but there's also a lot out there that is on the other side of that issue. There's one guy that I think does a really good job, but you've got to really want to, I mean, you've got to be a geek and really want to get into this topic. His name is Leighton Flowers. He's a professor somewhere. I can't remember where he's at. He's real, he's real smart dude. Uh, and he's got a channel on YouTube where he, he basically takes apart all of the Calvinist arguments and does a really good job of, of talking through how, how he believes they have misinterpreted lots of key verses in the Bible. Um, his, his channel, this is funny, his channel on, uh, which you'll think is funny, most people won't care, it, on YouTube is Soteriology 101. Mm. It's a word that nobody ever uses. Mm. I haven't heard you since Bible college. Bible college. But that's his channel. And I don't know why he chose to name it that, but it's probably because he's, he's a smart. really smart he's guy. He's a really smart guy, and he thinks everybody knows what Once that means. Once you know a word, you feel like you have to use it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Soteriology is the study of salvation. Yeah. yeah, That's all it means. But that's his channel. If you want to know more about that, uh, he certainly he answers a lot of those particular questions that people have about the Bible, specifically those passages that... Uh, Calvinists will point to and say, see, that that points to predestination and God has destined uh, everybody to heaven or hell before the foundation of the world. And he shows how that's a misinterpretation and clears a lot of that stuff up. So if you're interested in that, you can watch that or watch episode 114 or 105. Yeah. We talk about it in a little bit more detail, but that's the quick answer. Got anything I, to add? I don't have nope, anything I think to add. All right. So, and so then the obvious part, the next one of why would you share the gospel, I would, I, I don't know if yeah. everybody, yeah. they have an answer, they which do. also doesn't make sense to me. They do. But and it makes sense to them. Again, I, they're still Christians. They're still brothers oh, yeah. in Christ. Absolutely. Brothers and sisters in Christ. That um, Our Calvinist friends are not, you know, outside the faith. Yeah. Thankfully, you can be wrong about a lot of things if you're them. right about Jesus. Yes. yes. I I have been wrong about almost everything. <laughs> well, and the benefit is even, even I mean, I know we had that question, I guess it was a while ago, of what do we disagree on? But I think even, you can even hear in our conversations ways that we are reinterpreting in our conversations with one another in our minds. And what are, what are we trying to figure it out? So I think the benefit of it is, is that some of these conversations have been going on for 500 years, 600 years, longer than that, 2,000 years about this. And it's just like a really long conversation between Christian brothers and sisters. Now, obviously, there have been horrific ways those arguments have been taken to be used against one another, even to the point of violence. Right. But uh, 
if if you choose to look at it as okay, we don't agree because even the point you said of why would I share the gospel? The point is that they are sharing the gospel, which we think is important, mm -hmm. and we may not agree on every point that they make about the gospel, but they they are they are preaching Christ crucified, resurrected, and that he's bringing a new creation. All of those things that we would go, man, that is central to the yes. faith. They are, they may believe that not everyone who hears, what, but see, I even say that, that not everyone who hears it is going to turn to God. I also think that not everyone who hears the gospel is going to turn to God. So on those things, the back, you know, kind of inside baseball conversations about whether the person had free will to choose it or whether God determined it, all of those things, I think, um, ultimately, even I think we would admit, well, we don't know one way for the other. We have the evidence we have, mm -hmm. and I would point to it. Uh, yeah. But it's just inside, it's inside Christianity talk at this point, and we're yes, trying to is. figure it out. And I think we have to be really careful not to condemn other people for those kind of things because, I mean, I can... I can just say I don't agree with it at all. It's not like I haven't looked at it and yeah, studied it that's right. yeah. and decided I don't think this is right. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean I think those are bad people nor that I somehow think they're condemned. Now, to be clear, that's not true for everybody, but I think right. it's no. very difficult. Mm -hmm. They to might love, not say that about us. Yeah, that's right. That To know. love people the way Jesus calls me to love them and to condemn them for something that the Bible has not made absolutely 100% clear. And the interesting part to me is this particular question, I, it doesn't appear like from the epistles that anybody in the early church is arguing over this. Mm -hmm. that, or if they are, the writers of the letters to those churches are so disinterested in the argument yes. that they don't address it. It may very well be they were having these same arguments even back then, but the writers of the scriptures were like, hey, y'all stop fighting. Mm. Yeah, that's. Mm. I mean, if you get right down to it, the majority yeah. of the books are about y'all live in unity, y'all yeah. get along with each other, y'all love each other. That's really important for our witness. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say about this: is it, the impact has to be. I have to move toward people, not away from them, because of something we might disagree on. Good word. Question two: We got to get moving. We got. Oh, we okay. Got I'm questions. sorry. We got four questions from Sydney. If we're going to honor the Sydney episode. We're going to have it. All right, Sydney's second question is, is it possible to backslide or to lose your salvation? I will also say episode 80 oh. and episode 75 deal with these questions uh, in different degrees. Uh, episode 80 is about how can Christians be sure that they have salvation, and episode 75 is about can you lose it. Um, so anybody want to hit real quick on that question so that she doesn't have to listen to the whole podcast? I think, you know, the, the best example I can give is there, there's a guy, I think his name is Demas, that Paul basically calls out and says that he is no longer one of us or he left us mm -hmm. or he, he turned us. away yeah, from sure. us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like he said he fooled us mm -hmm. and he never was a part of us. He, he just decided he wanted no longer to be a part of us. Yeah. And uh, that's sort of the way Paul puts that. I think if it was possible for a companion of Paul's to walk away, I think it's possible for anybody to walk and away. I, I think it also goes back to last episode that uh, we had last week where we talk about at the very end um, who winds up in heaven, and we mm -hmm. said it's people who, who get exactly what they want right. to get. So uh, it seems possible to me that there could be a person who at one point says, I want God, I want heaven, and then decides, you know what, no, I don't. And um, God has to. You know, he, he says, I'll, I'll, I'll honor that if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and I can say, I I know people who oh, have said that very thing. They had a, and, and but you can tell me that, well, they weren't truly, you don't know. They yeah, weren't truly saved. They didn't truly mean it. You don't know that. I guarantee you, they thought they meant it. Um, <laughs> they thought they meant it when they believed and they said that, you know, heaven is what they wanted and God is who they wanted to be with. And they also very well mean it today when they tell me, I don't want anything to do with God. Yeah, that argument of they didn't really mean it or they weren't truly saved to me seems as judgmental as deciding. I'm, I'm deciding on the backside. Mm -hmm. Oh, they didn't. They were never really true. And you're deciding that because you have a theology that says they can't walk away. Yeah. You've decided that they haven't. 
it's not evidence that they can't walk away. You just decided they can't and interpreted their behavior in light of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I will say, I, I do, again, this is another one of those inside questions that um, I know brothers and sisters in Christ who believe differently who would say, no, you're sealed with your salvation and you can't lose it. And they have verses to point to and evidence that they would say, I, I, you know, I'm not sure that it has convinced me. But again, back, like our, we said in the very first question, I don't think that those people are well. But I think even for that belief, but. same thing we talked about with sharing the gospel. Yes. I think we come down on the same behavior, which yes. is I have talked with people. They would quote parts of First John where he talks about those people left us, but they were never really one of that's us, right. and that's how they deny Christ. Mm-hmm. They they claimed Christ, but then they left. They were never really one of us, yeah. which I'm not saying they're interpret. I don't know. I don't My know. point is, if we both agree. <laughs> that a person who came to church, called themselves a Christian, was baptized, did all that, if I think they meant it, but then they turned away from it, you think they did all the actions, but didn't meet it, and are both of them, because that's what John and Paul would say, is treat those people mm-hmm. like unbelievers who are, you are trying to draw back into the fold. If our behavior and compassion and love towards them is the same, who knows what's really going on on the inside? Not my job to determine. That's right. right. And so, brothers and sisters on both sides of the arguments, if our behavior is the same, then I think we're yeah. we're in lo- we're ultimately in line. We wind up at back in the same place. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, I like it. So, all right. So, if you want more on that question, uh, episode eighty, episode seventy-five, which was a long time ago, I think we were still recording, like, in the in the lobby. Probably. Probably. Remember those Probably. days? Oh yeah. Yeah, we were probably there before we had this. Wonderful log cabin that yeah. we are now we situated in. Yeah. Okay, uh, question number three from Miss Sydney. What's your opinion on prophecies today and people who claim to receive a word directly from God? I know some people who I believe are real Christians, but I am so skeptical of their claims that they hear the voice of God speaking extra biblical knowledge to them. Prophets. I also am skeptical, Sydney. <laughs> and yes, when people try to push it on me, and this is not kind, and I wouldn't, don't think I would say it these days. I said to a person years ago who was, you know, really, I've got this word of the Lord for you. I'm a prophet. I said, man, I'm willing to accept you as a prophet as long as you're willing to accept the consequences of a prophet, which mm. means if it turns out you're wrong, I get to stone you. <laughs> if you're not willing to accept that, then you yeah. might not be a true prophet. Yeah. I sort of come down in a similar area. My, my feeling on this is, um, I don't know, and I can't ever say, um, but I do know this. True prophets are right when they prophesy. And so in no matter who you are or what you decide to say is a prophecy, neither one of us knows right away when you say it, we got to wait. That's right. That's my whole point in it. I, you know, and I'm not saying that to be flippant. I, I really do mean it. I, if someone... You know, on, if you see someone on television give a prophetic word and they say this is going to happen or they look at you and you, you and I have had these kind of things where people say, I, I have a word for you that God said and this is what's going to happen in your life. My reaction to both of those is the same. I said, well, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's the way I tell people all the time when you ask me this question. I say, well, you know what? Just give it some time, wait and see, and then watch what happens when it doesn't come to pass and see how that person reacts. Mm-hmm. If they are humble enough to go, you know what, I was wrong, I am, I repent of that, I'm sorry for, for being presumptuous, or if they try to manipulate it, which I see a lot of guys, especially on TV, do this, they'll say, well, what I really meant was, right, that's right. or, you know, that really wasn't exactly what I was talking about, that was something else, and they just, they move the goalpost, right. so mm-hmm. to speak. Um, yeah, I'm real skeptical of those folks. Um, so I would say that to to Sid, I would say you know Sydney asked questions. I would say Sydney be very skeptical, be, do, have the wait and see attitude, and also remember when somebody speaks and they say it's the word of the Lord, he's not going to contradict himself. Mm-hmm. So be real careful if you hear something that is not doesn't line up with what you already know to be true in Scripture. Um, that is something you I think you can immediately go ahead and say, well, um, I'm, I'm thinking that's wrong. Um, yeah, I just. Healthy skepticism is your friend on that one. Isn't there a place in Peter where Peter says that every word of prophecy must be established by two or more? Mm-hmm. And I would just say to a person, particularly, I know that that phrase, I have a word of the Lord for you, mm-hmm. 
often isn't even about the future. It's about something happening in mm -hmm. your life. I, yeah. mm -hmm. And I would just, you know, receive it. Mm -hmm. And if you think there might be something to it, share it with somebody. And if two or more confirm, oh, no, you know, I think the Lord might be saying that to you. It might be something you listen to. But if it's just one person that says it mm -hmm. and you, you know, I, I wouldn't put too much stock well, in I think, it. I and think, definitely, like Jason said, if it contradicts Scripture in any way, you got to let that go. That's right. I think, yeah, I think it depends on what you mean by uh, prophecy. I certainly think all, I am incredibly skeptical of any predictive mm -hmm. prophetic word that, yeah. oh, in in t 10 years this is going to happen or in two weeks mm -hmm. this is going to happen, whether it's into the world or just something's going to happen and this yeah. going to I also have kind of global ones of, oh, this is what's really going on behind the scenes. But I, I would say, I think that's the point of Christian community. The thing that, 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 that Peter is referencing is that someone brings something. I feel God speaking this. The way their church services would work would be mm -hmm. that way, that someone speaks yeah. it and then another person either confirms it and goes, oh, man, when you said that, that does feel like God's speaking. Let's pray on that. Let's figure this out. I have had many a times people come to me and say, I've been praying and you keep coming to my mind. Mm -hmm. And is there something going on? Or, hey, I keep seeing this thing, and I, God just keeps telling me i got to say something to you. I believe that's also prophetic, that sure. God was speaking to them, yep. revealing something that they not, not necessarily they might have had glimmers of. And I think what often happens is, and maybe this is the problem, is some of us uh, only go off gut instinct. Mm -hmm. So I assume... That's not God. That's I have made this assumption, and I have done this, and either good or bad, you act off that gut instinct, and, and I'm going to tell you what I think, whether it's God or not, or I think that's my gut, so I'm not going to say anything. When we get very tuned in, one is an individual to being able to hear what God might actually be saying to us, but also, as you've already said, I do that in community, and it doesn't. it isn't me as the prophet bringing a word that you have to accept whether it's true or not. You just have to accept it. That's a problem if I'm in a community context where I'm in a small group and someone says, hey, I keep hearing this, and you keep saying this thing. God keeps saying to me that I need to say to you X, Y, and Z, and then the community gets to hear it, or and it doesn't have to be 12 people. I mean, one or two people, yeah, as you've yeah, said, yeah. and someone else goes, well, that contradicts Scripture. Then we all go, oh, nope, that wasn't God. Or, yes, I've also heard that we need to talk because otherwise what the other side of that is is, Anyone who comes to me and says, hey, I feel God saying this because it didn't personally come to me, I can discount it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the benefit of community. And unfortunately, in Christian community, sometimes we elevate individual people to the status of prophet. Yep. Or even, even just by being a pastor, people go, wow, well, he must have heard something I didn't hear. Mm -hmm. And I think both of those things held in tension is the way to do it, of being skeptical but accepting it in community. Yeah, you and I, Nathan, just had in the last day or so an example mm -hmm. of this and that uh, we just had a thing in our service recently where a part of it was us uh, spending a little bit of time listening to the Spirit for conviction. And uh, during that time, I had a very strong conviction about something I wasn't thinking of before that time. I was actually doing the message, but I wasn't doing, Jason was leading that reflection time. And on Monday, I decided to say it to another of our people on staff, Steve. Steve, I had this thought about such and such, and I just need to run it by you to see what you think. Turns out, Steve had had a very similar thought about the same thing, and later yesterday, we were talking, and Nathan had had the mm -hmm. same thing, which we then all confirmed, okay, mm -hmm. that probably means we need to do something. Yeah, that's um, most likely, and... We already know just because we know Scripture, nothing in that we felt contradicted Scripture right, sure. and very much was supported by Scripture. No, but the good illustration is I am a gut-level person. As you right. know, and I on the Enneagram, that's the way I operate. But I've come to doubt myself enough to know yeah, my natural inclination would be, yeah, that's off. I'm just going to go do it. Mm -hmm. That I've come to the place of going, uh, I'm going to ask somebody. I'm going to test right. that against somebody who's different from me. Mm -hmm. uh, who sees things a little different, and Steve, you know, offers right next to mine, and then later we had that. So that's an example. I think it's wise to doubt them, uh, but in community, you should probably listen if the two or more tell you. Well, and that's what Paul then says a couple places of 
testing the spirits. And what he means is when you receive a revelation or you feel God is speaking to you, every time it should be tested. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit you, I think you get to have in this where you don't have to feel like you're being judgmental of, um, I'm judging you because you just brought this to me. You can just go, everything anyone tells me, I'm going to test it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to test, does this match up with Scripture? Yeah. Does, do other people confirm this? And now I get to just live in the freedom of, I can believe the best. Hey, you brought that to me with good intentions. Let me take that. But I'm also just not going to accept it just because right. another person That's said right. it. There's a mm -hmm. tension to be held. That's right. That's right. And, you know, Ed talked about, you know, kind of, I've had people do that. For me, they'll come up mm -hmm. after a service or something and say, you know, I feel God spoke to me and all. I never go, well, I'm going to be skeptical about that. No. Oh, right. I, I always receive it. I always am thankful. And But I know what I'm going to do after that is like you guys just yep. I'm going to test that out. I'm yep. going to run that by some other people. Uh, and I'm politely going to receive that from somebody. I'm not going to condemn them from that. Because no. if, if it really is God leading them to speak that, I certainly don't want to to do anything right. to, to yeah, harm that or it. to discourage them in that gift because it, it truly is a gift yes, yes. That's right. uh, that God's given. So, um, so you know, I know I was a little flippant in the way that I, you know, because I watch, you know, I've seen people on television and I oh, hear sure. that on the internet. There's been a lot of stupid prophecies out there, you know. And most of the time they're about predicting the future about some yes. current world event. About I think politics or I think, something like and that. I think, I think it's very I think, wise to be skeptical of all of that. Well, and I think your answer is yeah. the correct answer, which is yeah. wait. I'll just wait. Because see. when someone tells you the world's going to end in two in two weeks, no matter what you do, you go, thanks for telling. It's right. like the guy who comes and tells you, hey, this is what the whales are saying. Mm. You're like, well, well, great. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to test that or to know, I guess, when the whales tell me. And I think it's the same thing. Someone tells you the world's going to end in two weeks. You go, mm -hmm. I don't. I, I'll wait in two weeks and then I'll know. Yeah, I just I just hung out with a person that they started telling me, well, here's what I've decided that this is what revelation means and this is the person, you know, they were bringing in Putin and Trump and Biden. Putin and, is in revelation? Oh, yeah. They were telling them where they fit into the whole story. And, and I listened politely to the whole thing and I said, well, all right. I said, I guess we'll see. And we will. Yeah, we will. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We will. And yeah, that's right. the way you test it. That's right. You test it. We'll I think it's just important. You just test it. But I, was, but I was honest with this person. I said, you know, they said the same thing about some of the people that were in politics in the right. 80s. That's right. So I would just hold that interpretation. Turns out you tested that, and that was not it true. It didn't work out so good yeah. for that profit. Right. So anyway. All right, last question for Miss Sidney. And this one's kind of fun. Have y'all ever encountered a person who was possessed by a demon? Have you ever? I believe I have. I knew you said you I have. believe I have, but I don't have a way to know that. But it's the freakiest thing I've ever had. It was a mm -hmm. long time ago. And, uh, yeah, I was young and, uh, yeah, scared you to crap. You don't want to tell us any details. Well, yeah. no. Well, That's I, okay. The, the details, to... I'll tell you, if somebody came in an office, uh, I was at, at a church, not this church, the church I worked at before this. Um, church office was in the basement. I'm the only staff member. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a person in my office and a uh, uh, different looking young man. I was young at the time, and they're young and obviously in distress and uh, begins to tell me this story about things that he's been doing and that he thinks he's been possessed by the de a demon. And um, lots of weird things began there were just lots of really weird things that were happening that I, I, I trusted him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think <laughs> that's, all, that's all you got to say. On I, that one. I don't have any other way to interpret it, and yeah. and thankfully I didn't have to do much else with it. But I did read some books afterwards that uh, confirmed that those kind of things have happened to other people in other places around the planet where yeah. demon possession seems to be. Or normal. I was going to say, I have not personally had a, you know, you asked if we, I have personally, no, I have not had a, that I can say for sure, um, but I know, there are people that I know personally mm -hmm. around, who are, who do ministry around the, the, the globe, and they tell me they have, and there yes. are people that I trust, they are not sensationalists, That's right. and I have heard their stories, um, and I do not doubt them one bit. Well, and I think at least for most of us, 
coming across demonic possession is probably not as frequent or common, but I certainly have been with people and felt that when I'm with them or in their life that there is a level of what people often recall of spiritual oppression, mm -hmm. that they are in a place that what is affecting their life, the level of, you know, we use the word sorrow before, the level of sorrow, the level of even sometimes self-harm that are, are coming upon themselves uh, is not just a psychological problem, that there is more to it. Yeah. I know certainly uh, when Jennifer and I have done foster things before, being with young children who are not just having thoughts about themselves, but having emotions that at their age, it is clear that is coming from somewhere else. And I think what unfortunately happens sometimes in the West and very kind of things that have been shaped by rationalism and enlightenment, we first want to go to uh, some kind of rational explanation for things. But as believers, uh, you know, the way, the way that Jesus says that you, you, you drive out the demon is through, is through prayer and fasting. And I don't think whenever I'm with a person, because what we know demons want to do is they want to cause harm to people. Um, I certainly, as Jason said, have never had even an experience like that. And I know of pastors that regularly will tell me. Um, uh, I know even here in Georgia of a pastor who told me that because uh, uh, over in, uh, in Harrelson County, uh, there is some activity of, of witches. Which is where I was. I, I, yeah. was, I was at a church in Harrelson County. And I recently, I was actually visiting a church over there, and they were speaking on this. And one of the guys said, I've had several encounters that were similar to what you talked about. Uh, but I certainly think sometimes in our day-to-day -day interactions, even maybe sometimes with ourselves, uh, we think the only solution is something psychological or physical. And sometimes I believe that because of trauma people go through, because of uh, wounds in our life, it opens this door for Satan to speak other lies to us. And so I have never experienced that, but I certainly think I have experienced people who what is aff afflicting them is beyond just a physical, psychological, emotional problem. Uh, and I think, so when I heard this question, I certainly think of all, the, the answer to the question is no for me, but I think sometimes as uh, Western Christians, we are sometimes quick to dismiss, yeah. oh, well, it couldn't be a demonic. They couldn't be Satan at work. And I certainly don't want to just see Satan in everything. That's right. So I don't want to go to that extent. There's two extremes. But, right. to, but to see in everything God is at work in things, but we do believe there's a spiritual enemy who is also at work in things. Uh, and sometimes when we experience things, the best thing we can do is, is pray about it and okay. just pray for that person I ourselves. think we are certainly at a place in our country where we don't see Satan in enough things. And we, sure. Since his goal is to oppose God and to oppose the body of Christ, we don't see enough of the things that are destroying the work of God in people and yes. the church as his work. Now, whether it's possession, I'm not saying right. possession, or even oppression, but he is actively, actively at work in our country, and our world, and... Uh, and is being mistaken for the opposite. Yeah, in many, that, cases. in many, many cases. And that's biblical. He comes as an angel of light. That simply means that there is going to be things that you see as mm -hmm. uh, of God that is, has been twisted, yeah. and it is actually the opposite. Well, and sometimes what he's trying to do, because I thought this too, is... He's trying to divide us, and yes. often often the work he is doing is in the division of people mm -hmm. because sometimes we mistake the work of Satan for the work of people. Mm -hmm. And so what we look at is we go, well, if, if the people on the other political side of me mm -hmm. or this ethnic group of people or these people who don't come from my country or just people who disagree mm -hmm. with me, it's them who's causing all the problems. And that we look at what's going on in our world and we go, if we could just get the right political solution, we could just get the right, you know, medical solution or whatever. We could get the right solution of this world. And sometimes it is a spiritual problem. It's not to say that we don't work on the problems in this world. It's to say that one of the ways, and, you know, you mentioned this at this point. It's been weeks that this came out. But in your mention, the first step for believers is dependence on God. And so the first step is always the spiritual side. Doesn't mean that we don't make real world physical changes in the physical reality we live in. But the first step is to say, 
let me approach this from a spiritual angle. It's why I wish everybody really understood and would practice at least part of the 12 steps. The first step is the step of there's a problem. I can't handle this. I am powerless. I am powerless against this, and God must act on my part. We almost always say, there's a problem. I don't have what it takes, but I bet that doctor does. I bet that psychologist does. I bet the school does. I, gonna, I bet they yeah. do. I was going to say, um, just a little personal note here. Uh, you just reminded me of this. I saw a counselor once, and I was under what I would call it's deep uh, oppression, a spiritual yeah. uh, darkness over me, and it was the reason it drove me to my counselor. And I, it just hit me. That was the first place he went with me. Was he said, "You've got an enemy. He is after you right now, mm-hmm. and the, you are battling a spiritual battle." And up until that point, I was thinking much more physical, much more right. emotional than that. I was thinking much more other world ty- worldly type things. And he immediately cut right to the spiritual, and uh, that was a key for me. Um, when I started seeing this as a truly spiritual battle, uh, it, it helped turn the turn the tide on on where I was at. So. It, it's why I think the enemy most often attacks us at that step if he can keep us from ever saying, God help me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And really meaning it. Yep. Uh, he will. Yep. He'll go, oh, well, let's, yeah, go to a doctor. Oh, yeah, go to a counselor. Yeah, mm-hmm. read that book. Go mm-hmm. to that conference. Do mm-hmm. that thing. Talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. But if he can keep you from saying, God help me mm-hmm. and really mean it. Mm-hmm. All right. I hope that one was not as fun of an answer. Not. We got really deep we on that one. We got deep on that. Good for us. Uh, I will say before we wrap up uh, on that question, we did an entire episode on this, episode 89. Really? Yeah. I was as shocked as you are hmm. <laughs> when I went through our list. We, we got a whole episode about I will choose not casting to be out shocked. demons. I knew that. <laughs> but anyway, I don't remember us talking about this. But hey, we're at what, 126, so I'm not going to remember them all. But if you want to know more about that, uh, you can check out episode 89. How, if you didn't remember it, how did you find it? You just typed the word demons? No, I actually scrolled through uh, all 126 Oh, look episodes. at the work this man puts into this podcast. I did. I did. And I was looking for anything about this, and I, found, I said, look at that. I don't what think we say this enough. We appreciate your work on this. Jason wow. just, Jason just, just getting the resources. Do He's doing it. He's killing it. Well, I appreciate the thanks. I hope you guys appreciate it. I don't you're it selfish. You don't even much. think about the blood, sweat, and tears this man. Sydney, send Jason a cupcake. <laughs> yeah, send, send Jason and, some cupcakes. And, and the rest another of Another one so he can share it with me. Yeah, we <laughs> need to. We need yeah. cupcakes. But yeah. So, Sydney, we hope that you were honored by the episode that we just dedicated to you. It will always be yours, 126. Oh! So, we hope it was good. And for you guys who are sending in questions, let us know who you are. You don't have to. We still answer your questions. We love you either way. But We would like to treat fun. you just this way. Yes. So if you felt... So when you put your name, also tell us what you could give us. <laughs> yeah. Michael Cupcake. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's what matters. <laughs> what we get out of we, it. We see our relationship with you guys as primarily usury. So if there's something you could do for us... Jason had to look up the names <laughs> of podcast episodes. Do you know how long that took? Probably four and a half minutes. So I'll say four minutes of math. So if there's so. something you could do with four and a half minutes of labor. I, here's what I will guarantee you. I can eat a cupcake before he can look it up. <laughs> well, yeah. That would be a fun game. I'd be a big cupcake if you couldn't. All right. So there you have it. That's episode 126. Next week, we'll come back. We have one big, long question. It's going to take the whole episode. Is this a big one? All right. We have not. There is no episode for this. Oh. We have never dealt with this question before. So you better come back and see what that is. Oh. See you next week. Bye, Bye. Sydney. Bye, Sydney.